The ASUS GX701 is the 17-inch model of the Zephyrus S. And like other Zephyrus models, it's got a custom design to improve cooling. So let's test it out and find out just how hot it gets. I'll be taking a detailed look at thermals, overclocking, and seeing how much we can improve performance by undervolting and boosting fan speed. I've got the GX701GX model of the 17-inch Zephyrus S here, which means there's an Intel i7-8750H CPU and 90 watt NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics. It's also available with 2070 or 2060 graphics too, so expect different results with those configurations. The ASUS Zephyrus laptops have a unique cooling solution. When you open the lid, the base of the laptop rises up to allow air to exhaust. The keyboard and touchpad are found towards the front of the laptop as the whole second half of the chassis are the intake fans. There are also heat pipes shared between the processor and graphics, so a change in temperature of one will affect the other. Before we look at the temperatures, I need to mention that the ASUS Armory Crate software provides three different modes, Silent, Balanced, and Turbo. Silent basically lowers the TDP of the CPU to save power and reduce fan noise. Balanced is essentially stock settings while Turbo overclocks the GPU core by 100MHz and GPU memory by 124MHz. Additionally, while under a combined CPU and GPU workload, the CPU TDP is limited to 40 watts in balanced mode, and boosted to 45 watts with Turbo mode. And Turbo mode also increases the fan speed to help with cooling, as raising the TDP will generally increase heat along with performance. Thermal testing was done in an ambient room temperature of 24 degrees Celsius so expect different results in different environments. I've tested idle down the bottom with the silent profile, and the temperatures were fairly cool. Gaming was tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results are from running the ADA64 CPU stress test and Heaven benchmark at the same time to fully load the system. We can see that every time turbo mode is enabled, the temperatures drop down, and this is because of the increased fan speed associated with this mode. The CPU temperatures are a little on the warmer side. However, I did not encounter thermal throttling, just power limit throttling. A minus 0.07 volt undervolt was applied to the CPU where listed by UV. Like other ASUS Zephyrus laptops I've tested, I couldn't go much lower without problems. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. We can see the GPU clock speeds rise anytime turbo mode is enabled as the previously mentioned overclock gets applied. The CPU clock speeds also rise as well as the CPU TDP gets boosted, while undervolting helps further. These results are actually pretty good, especially from such a thin machine. While gaming with both turbo mode enabled and the CPU undervolting, I could hit the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7-8750H CPU, and then only just below this at the top of the graph with the worst case scenario stress test running. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU only stress tests without any GPU load. With the ADA64 stress test running, it was possible to hit the 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7, either with turbo mode, or with balanced mode combined with a CPU undervolt. Likewise, here are the temperatures from the same tests just shown, where the undervolt in the balanced and turbo profiles lowers the temperatures by a few degrees. To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here. There's no difference to the single-core results, as this isn't enough load to cause any throttling. The results otherwise closely match the CPU-only clock speeds just shown before. Here are the GPU-only clock speeds while under a graphical-only stress test with balanced and turbo modes, as well as the improvements seen by applying a manual 150MHz overclock to the GPU core with MSI Afterburner, although it wasn't much above what the turbo profile provided. Here are the temperatures from these same tests. Balanced mode saw hotter temperatures despite the performance being lower as the fans don't spin up as fast compared to turbo mode. So how does this performance boost actually translate into games? I've tested with the exact same Windows, Nvidia, and game updates installed. The only changes were the ones listed here. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark at 1080p. At ultra settings, there was no change to the average frame rate, but an improvement to 1% low, while the other settings saw the opposite. Either way, the boost was fairly minimal, which I think is because the graphics were already overclocked thanks to turbo mode. So I suspect most of the improvement here is probably from our slight CPU undervolt, which I think is good as you can easily get excellent performance out of the box. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle with the silent profile enabled, the keyboard was around 30 degrees Celsius and a bit warmer up the back. While gaming, the keyboard was still fairly cool, in the mid 30s, while the back gets much hotter in comparison as that's where the heat generating components are. Same story with the stress tests running. It does get up to the high 50s up the back, and is quite hot to the touch. 
but you shouldn't be putting your hands back there anyway, so that's fine. While gaming on battery power, the keyboard does warm up a bit, as the battery that's being discharged is right underneath. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle it was quiet, although the fan was still audible. While gaming in balanced mode, it's a little quieter than most other laptops I've tested at stock. Then same results with the stress test going in balanced mode. Finally with turbo mode, it does get a bit louder, though still around average compared with many others. Overall I think the Zephyrus design is doing a good job here. I wasn't seeing thermal throttling even under combined CPU and GPU workloads, despite the fans being quieter than many other laptops I've tested. The CPU can still get fairly warm under these worst case loads. But as we saw, using the higher fan speed in turbo mode and applying an undervolt kept it going smoothly. The unique cooling design does however mean that you won't be able to run the laptop with the lid closed while docked though, so worth keeping in mind if you planned on doing that. The 230 watt power brick also seemed to be adequate. I didn't see performance loss or battery drain under heavy loads while plugged into the power. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results. Primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements, so don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. For example, my i7 only got a minus 0.07 volt undervolt before becoming unstable. I've had other laptops that would easily take minus 0.15 volts, no problem. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Undervolting and raising the fan speed is much easier for most people to do. And as we've seen, it did improve performance in the ASUS GX701. I didn't bother trying to use my cooling pad here, as the base of the laptop has no air intakes like a normal one, so it wouldn't help as much. Let me know how much of a performance boost you found by undervolting your hardware, and what you thought of the improvements here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the ASUS GX701 gaming laptop.